everyone, my name is Jennifer and today I'm going to be making a melt and pour soap. Um, I will be doing a swirl video and um, I um, I have been making soap for melt and pour soap for about two years now, but this will actually be my very first video. So I'm, I'm kind of nervous. I hope it turns out okay, but if it doesn't, please please show me pity i am a newbie at this i'm gonna do my best but i have had a few people ask me to make a video on doing my swirls um so here we go so i have already got everything ready just because with this being my first video i'll make sure that everything uh, was just as simple as as possible that i had everything ready so i'm using crafter's choice base um and i just i'm just doing the two colors today so i have um I, actually i have a mixture of bases in here but they're all detergent free i um am, am completely out of uh, melt and pour base now so this is a mixture of buttermilk shea and triple butter because that was all i had and then this is the clear i don't usually use the detergent base but I did not have any clear detergent free left. So um, this is the crystal clear. And uh, it's been a while actually since I have used a non-detergent free base. So the temperatures, I mean, they, you know, they behave a little bit differently. So I'm hoping that uh, everything goes okay. These are actually starting to I'm not going to have a whole lot more time to talk because these are really starting to thicken up now. So, but, um, but yeah, so the Crafter's Choice uh, detergent free bases, they, they allow that they, they stay fluid a very long time. You can get them down to about a hundred degrees before you even start pouring and they'll be fine. Um, as a matter of fact, that's what I always do. That's, that's one of the main things is the temperature with the swirling. I get it down to 100 degrees, but if you're using a different base, then your your temperatures are going to be different. If you're using SFIC, even though they're detergent free, it's still going to be a little bit different on the temperature. They behave differently. If you're using Stevenson, it's definitely going to be different. You're not going to be able to let it get down to 100 degrees. Um, it will already be seized up before then. So. Um, so just depending on the base that you use, you're just going to have to play around with it until you find that that perfect temperature to swirl. But definitely with the detergent-free bases, you are okay with letting it get down between 100 and 105 degrees should be completely fine. Now for these, right now, well, this crystal clear is doing pretty good. Like I said, this is not a detergent-free base. It's down to 103, and it is still fluid. Okay, the um, the white base here, it actually feels like it is a little thicker. How about that? It is definitely thicker than that clear base. It's at 103. I better go ahead and try to start pouring because it's not going to last much longer here which if i have to put it back in the microwave that's okay too not a problem there but um okay so i mean basically what i do is yeah that's already too that's that's really thick thicker than what i normally start pouring out hope you can see that okay um so I just start pouring, pour a little bit of the white, and I'm just going to, all I do is I kind of go down the side, both sides, and then up the middle. Every, you know, people have different, different techniques for doing their swirling. I'm not saying that my technique is uh, better by any means. But this is just how I do it. I go, I don't usually wait in between the pouring because I've already generally allowed my 
my uh, soap to get so cool. Some people will pour a little bit and then wait before they pour the next layer. And that's totally fine if you want to do that. I personally just don't do that because I just find that it... I usually end up seeing lines in between my layers. So, um, you know, maybe I'm just not doing something right here. But anyway, so I just, for the white, I just kind of go up each side and then down the middle. And then for the color, I will just kind of do a zigzag up the middle is kind of how I do that. And I just keep doing that. I really hope you can see this. I forgot my skewer. I need to get my skewer. I definitely need to get my skewer. So, yeah, this is way, way thicker than what it normally is at this point. All right, I'm going to be right back, you guys. I need to go get my skewer. I'll be right back. All right, so I went and got my skewer, and I actually what I did was I ran my skewer down the, I don't like for my, sometimes when it gets thick, it kind of, you know, the edges aren't straight or even, so I, I like to run it up and down. I also popped my soap, my white soap in the microwave for about 10 more seconds, but, oh, yeah, that's not, um, That's not, um, definitely not liquid enough there. But that's okay. That's all right. Um, it's going to, at least I know that the colors are not going to muddle together. That's for sure. So it's going to be all right. You see how I'm just kind of running the skewer along the edges there. This is going to have to go back in the microwave again here in just a second. I'm only putting it in there for about 10 seconds at the time, so one of my biggest um, issues that I had when I first started making soap is that I just didn't have the patience to wait. I, I just am not a patient person, and I did not, I, I just kept pouring before the soap was actually cool enough to pour. And it was, it just, it was causing the colors to just not be separated. And when I finally learned that I was just gonna have to be patient and let it get cooler, that's when I started being able to accomplish my swirls. Um, and this video, I'm, I'm mainly making this for, you know, some of the newbies. I mean, there are a lot of uh, experienced soap makers out there that, you know, definitely don't need my help, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's enough melt and pour videos out there. There are definitely some, some good ones out there, but there's not nearly as many people that I've found making melt and pour videos as there are cold process. So, um, definitely, you know, want to make sure that, because when I started, I mean, I did have some, some people that I definitely learned from. Dean Wilson definitely was somebody that I watched on a daily basis but um so he really helped me learn a lot um okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put this back in the microwave one more time i can't believe that this clear this crystal clear it's been so long since i've used it. it's at 90 98 degrees y'all i don't know if you can see this this is doing pretty well um so but I do need to warm up, I mean, um, yeah, warm up the white base again, so I'll be right back. Okay, all right, I am back, and okay, it's still really thick, but um, again, that's totally okay. 
I'm just amazed at how this purple, though, has really, um, you know, I used to use this, this crystal clear from uh, Crafter's Toys all the time, and, I mean, I've always liked it. I mean, the only reason why I stopped using it was because I started using the detergent-free bases. That was the only reason. Um, so I guess I just forgot how well it behaved, I guess. Um, but I'm just repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm just going up each side with the white and then diagonal up the middle with the purple. The purple is starting to get really, um, really thick now, too, so I hope y'all can really see this okay. By the way, y'all, um, I just, um, for, any, for anybody who knows me from any of the soap groups, um, I actually just made my first cold process soap the other day. I didn't video it. I was going to, but then I thought, you know, I can't do that. Um, who am I to, to even think that I should be allowed to video me doing cold process when I don't have a daggone clue as to what I'm doing? So, anyway, it turned out okay. I mean, really, it was, I had an issue. But as far as the final product, it, it could have definitely been worse. It, it ended up working out okay, I guess. I'm not real happy with the finished product, but, you know, I, I wasn't really expecting a big success with my first time so um all right i'm gonna have to warm uh, warm these up again just gonna have to be right back okay all right so we're getting towards the end here i may have actually warmed this white up a little too much but that's okay because we're towards the end and I made it a little bit too much, actually. So I might have enough to pour into and this leftover into another mold. This mold here is about. I don't know, I guess about 55, 50 to 55 ounces, I guess. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the way that top looks. Kind of fill in some of those cracks there. It's definitely, um, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna probably just leave that top alone. I thought about kind of moving it around a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I don't know, maybe I should put a little bit of glitter. Um, yeah, I always like glitter on top. I think I'm going to put a little bit of glitter. Let me go get some real quick. Okay, y'all, I went ahead and just put the glitter on top. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I don't know that I can really zoom in. But anyway, there's just a little bit of um, 
of the iridescent super sparkle glitter from uh, Wholesale Supplies Plus. Uh, the fragrance that I used was uh, Butterfly Flower. Um, it's a very nice scent. And so I used that for the first time. It's, um, I originally brought, bought it for my cold process batch, which I still have enough left to, to do a cold process batch. But um, yeah, so it has no vanilla in it, uh, which is always nice. I hate using vanilla color stabilizer. But anyway, so there it is. And it should be ready to cut either later tonight or in the morning. So I will definitely, definitely show you the picture of the cut. Hopefully it turns out okay. And again, sorry for the lengthy video. Sorry for my inexperienced video, but I will get better as time goes on. If anybody has any questions about anything, I'm more than happy to answer questions for you. Thank you. Bye. All right, you guys, um, I went ahead and cut these soaps um, yesterday morning. I, I didn't have time before work to actually do a video, so I wanted to do a quick one right now just so I could show them to you up close. Um, I'm happy with the way that the swirls turned out, but really I just want to kind of make clear, I want to clarify something that um, going back and watching my video that I made, I really kind of made a big deal about the soap being so thick and I just kind of want to clarify for your um, you know for the newbies out there I don't want to um, confuse anybody I talk about you know how low your temps need to be and then you know I went on and on about how thick the soap was so want to clarify your soap does need to be on the on the th thicker side the only point I was trying to make was just that I normally start pouring before it gets quite that thick. Um, normally, I only have to re-microwave like one time. So, um, so it does need to be cool for sure, as cool as you can possibly get it. And so I didn't want to make it out like that was a big no-no or anything like that. It actually turned out pretty good, me letting it get as thick as I did. Um, it's a different, a little bit different type of looking swirl than what I normally do, but or what normally turns out, but I really, really do like it. So, um, yeah, so there we go. And um, I will be making some more videos, hopefully, if there's anything particular that you want to see, uh, let me know. Thank you so much.